Hi, I'm Adam Cathcart, professor of Chinese history at Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington, the United States, uh, West Coast, Puget Sound, and uh, represent my Lutheran academic colleagues and academic colleagues, sinologists all over the world, sort of, something like that. Um, and historians generally, uh, one of whose stellar work I have here is a model, Sima Qian, the court historian of the Han Dynasty, who wrote this key, key history of the Qin Dynasty of which so much of our knowledge of the Qin Dynasty and thus the foundations of modern China is based. So how fortunate we are, and it's been translated in English several times, and this particular one by Burton Watson and published by um, Oxford is just tremendous. So let's just dive into it. The topic today is Li Si, the chief minister of Qin. There are four main points I want to make about um, this part of the text and about Li Si's career and what it exemplifies and how he approached his work and his relationship to power, and end with a little bit of a coda. Those four points are, number one, location, the importance of location. Number two, the importance of personal ambition in the career of Lisa, and thus in the era of warring states. Uh, number three is the role of personal connections, or guanxi, uh, to Lisa and his epoch. And fourth is the role of uh, timing and initiative. Uh, and the long coda is about the question of aliens. So let's get to it. Uh, number one, location, location, location. Number one, first real first role in real estate. You know that you know buying a house in Detroit. Um, you know that in buying an apartment in Chongqing. Um, and Lisa knew it long before there was such a thing as Chinese um, high-rise apartments, or the city of Detroit for that matter. Um, and Lisa uh, describes. He begins uh, his biography begins. Uh, in, in Sima Qian's uh, writing, in his youth, and he's a subject of the, the country of Chu. Um, in his youth, he was a minor clerk in the province, clearly a literate figure. He noticed rats eating filth in the latrines of the clerk's hostel. Um, but then when he goes into the granary, he notices that the rats there are much more content. Um, they're not worried about people or dogs. And Lisa sighed, and he said, a man's status is just the same as with rats. It simply depends on where one locates oneself. So we then turn to this question of initiative, um, the second point. And this is the idea that Lisa is a mover and a shaker. He's rather, he's quasi Nietzschean in his sort of will to power and in his faith that he, man can control his own destiny and that certainly Lisa will control his own destiny. Um, he takes leave of one of his employers and the king of true and he says, I have heard that if one gets an opportunity, one should not be slow to seize it. At the present time, when the 10,000 chariots are on the verge of combat, itinerant advisors are in control of affairs. The king of Qin now intends to swallow up all under heaven and govern with the title of emperor. This is the moment for a commoner to bestir himself, and indeed a ripe opportunity for an itinerant advisor. If one stays in a humble position and decides not to take action, this is to behave like an animal whose only concern is food. Only if one has a human countenance is one capable of taking vigorous action. Hence, there is no greater disgrace than loneliness, no deeper sorrow than poverty. To stay in a humble position for a long time or live in an area which suffers distress, to reject the age and show a hatred of profit, and to commit oneself to a lack of purposeful activity, this is not the nature of a man of action. Therefore, I intend to travel west, act as an advisor to the king of Qin. And he goes and he describes to the king of Qin how he can wipe out the feudal states just as easily as sweeping the top of a stove. He begins to create connections. 